ability to teach our children. Leave this conference with a new mentality that God is depending upon you, not on a casual basis. Look at the society we are. If we don't teach these children about God, what will happen? Means coming back to God. It means be right with me again. It means getting forgiveness for wandering away. I'm done of pretense. I'm done of self-deceit. I'm done of wasting my life. Lord, I have to do something.
you will remain as poor as church rats. Are you listening to me? So what we want to do is, what do I do in addition to fasting and pray that can help my destiny? I hope this goes. I'm told I can manage this from here. Media is not responding. Okay. Matthew 6, 19 to 21. Do not store up your sad treasures on the earth, where most and uh, value destroy, and where things break in and steal. Or store up your treasures in heaven, where most and value do not destroy, and where things do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will also be. Amen. Exodus 36, 1 to 6, we have just read that one. The story there is this. In Exodus 25, the Bible says, God spoke to what? Moses. He said, Build me what? A tabernacle. Someone say a tabernacle. And the Bible says, He called what? Angua. Hola, Holia, and the what? The Zali, Nainua of Catfish. Men who are well skilled, men who are knowledgeable, and say, Look, this is the work God has given to all, this is the plan. Amen. I need you to use your skill to build it. But they also needed money. So they say, money. money. So they say, money. money. To do this work. God, who is the greatest planner, knew that these people are in the what? In the wilderness. They are not working. They are not going to work. They are not doing government work or God work or anybody's work. They are just on a journey. Praise the Lord. Amen. But because he knew that and he knew what he wanted to do, the Bible says he did what? He somebody read for me or put square for me. Exodus chapter 12. Exodus 11, as a matter of fact. Exodus 11. Give me Exodus 11, as uh, 3. We are talking about greatness. The Bible says he encouraged them to do what? To borrow, to take money. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. In Exodus chapter 11, verse 35, he said they plunged what? Egypt. God gave them so much money. And because he knew that they needed to build a temple, there are some things that God is giving you an opportunity, a good job, a good career, because he knows what he wants you to use the money for. Am I speaking to somebody? Yes. Amen. Amen. Some of you will just find that you started a business, money is just coming out from your food. You don't go here. I mean, I remember a sister, she's in the uh, 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 Alberta region now. You know, when they, they start uh, announcing here, they said, this is what? The church where the Lord has us what? All my prayers. And you know, and she said, she came in and said, mm -mm, I've had so many things. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen. This is another one. Amen. Amen. But like all our regular people, Canada is a very good country. Amen. Amen. They have a, an opportunity for those who come and they want to learn how to write their resume and uh, look for a job and so on. So she went for this one for about six weeks. And by the time she finished, she started looking for a job. Normally, when you just come from Africa or somewhere, the issue is what? Do you have Canadian what? Experience. Of course, you just have Canadian experience. And this sister got a mouth watering job. Amen? And then she, she moved outside the place. And she goes back. He said, now I believe. Amen? Amen. That this is a church where the Lord what? As as all prayers. Somebody say amen. amen. So God prepared her, put her in a place, and gave her a job so that she can do what? Support God's work. And thank God for her life. Even though she's no more here, every year she supports what we are doing here. What I'm trying to say is this many of you, God has given you money because of what God wants to do. What He wants to use that money for. In the case of these people, the Bible says they get so much that what? Moses had to get up and say, oh, Excuse me, we have enough 
money for the project. We will get there here. Amen. Tell your neighbor, we will get there. We will get there. It's very easy to get there. All it takes is for you to obey God. Let's move forward. The next one. In Malachi, which is one uh, place that many of us know uh, about money. Amen. I'm going to give you this morning an exposition. And God gave to me about Malachi. From this day, this will be one of the scriptures you will like. Amen. Amen. The Bible says, Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there will be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields, and I will not drop their food before it is, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. Amen. I want to, for those who are intellectually, you know, stimulated, uh, which may not be for everybody, I want to give you some quotations that will help you. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. The first quotation I have for you this morning is, don't learn from, for learning's sake. Learn to improve your life. Amen? Amen. And that quotations come from inspiration of your district superintendent, my very humble self. He was that. Amen. Amen. So you can twist it out, tweet it out, send it on your Instagram or wherever. Don't learn for just learning's sake. Learn to improve your life. Number two, everyone pays tithes. Is the function of where you pay it. Amen? Everybody, whether you like it or not, whether you hate what I'm saying this morning or not, I can tell you there are some laws of life, everybody obeys it. How many people defy the law of gravity? Amen. 